I mean, it, it's a big F you to the Australian user of Facebook. Earlier this week, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg had a difficult decision to make. How was he going to respond to the new legislation in Australia that forced Facebook to pay news providers for content? He clearly decided it was time to show them who's boss and instantly pulled all news content from Facebook Australia, which meant that the whole way people receive information in that country changed overnight. Clearly, this was a nightmare for news providers and online sites like Quillette, and its brilliant founding editor Claire Lehman joins us from Sydney. Hi, Claire. Hi, Freddie. Thanks for having me. So, what what has been going on, and how does this affect you? Well, the the Australian government has been、uh, negotiating with Facebook and Google for some months now. They've got a proposed set of laws. And it's important to note that the laws haven't been passed yet; they're still in、um, the debate stage.、Um, they've got a proposed set of laws that would enable publishers of news content to bargain with Facebook and Google primarily, and ask them to pay a lump sum on a yearly basis for. The links or the news that are shared on their platforms. Now, this has、uh, come about because Australia's consumer and competition watchdog, the ACCC, has done an extensive investigation into the market power that Facebook and Google have, and has concluded that they basically run the internet. They have monopoly power, and、uh, a result of that is that news. Journalism is slowly dying in our country and also in countries around the world. Now, th- these laws have not yet been passed by our government; they're not enforceable yet. And what happened on? Yeah, it was yesterday. Apparently, our treasurer, treasurer Josh Frydenberg, was on the phone to Mark Zuckerberg in the morning. A couple of hours later, a switch had been flicked. And all news content was gone from Facebook. Frydenberg hadn't been warned. None of the businesses that operate on Facebook, you know, you know, I have a Facebook page, and I, you know, I share my links on the Facebook page. We were not given any pre-warning, and not only were news sites wiped and blocked from Facebook, but charities were caught up in the dragnet. Uh, pages for local hospitals,、uh, fire and rescue pages, Australian government pages. So they had their algor- whichever algorithm they designed to pick up news content、uh, was extremely blunt and wide. And all of these community services and government service- services were caught in the dragnet. And there's been quite a lot of outcry in Australia because we weren't given any warning. And because they clearly were reckless in their implementation of the block, you know, the block strategy. So, for a, a website like yours, it, I presume it's a source of traffic, Facebook, an, an important one. What happens when they suddenly turn、yeah. it off? Well, it does、uh, impact our revenue. Advertising is not our primary source of revenue. Our primary source of revenue is voluntary. Reader donations.、Um, we have a very engaged audience who、um, give us monthly donations, but we do have some revenue from advertising. And Facebook would be our third largest、um, referrer of traffic. And so, you know, our traffic metrics will decline probably by about twenty percent this month、uh, if the lockout is maintained. Uh, and that you know that does harm us as a business. So you、sure. and you're one of thousands of businesses,、yeah. and you know little and growing outlets, new media. That's what the internet is supposed to be all about. You know, thousand、yeah. flowers bloom, and one huge decision like this, and it just cuts them off at the knees. Absolutely, and it does. You know, I was critical of this media code、uh, when I first heard about it last year. I thought, hmm. It doesn't really、uh, take into account how the internet works, and you know, I've I've had this、um, open-minded perspective about 
big tech companies because, you know, I wouldn't have my business if it weren't for social media mm-hmm. and for um, the internet to sort of break down the barriers of distribution. However, just the reckless manner with which this lockout has been implemented I, has changed my perspective and I'm less sanguine about Facebook in particular particular now and um, I think a lot of other people will be as well. What's so frightening to me about it is that you've got to imagine Zuckerberg there. He's had his call with the Prime Minister. Clearly it didn't go very well and he sort of decided Right, Australia is is a small country as far as Facebook is concerned. You know, it's the it's the entire country as far as Australians are concerned. But for him, it doesn't affect the bottom line that much. He wanted to send a signal, and the, the legislation isn't even there. And he just thought, cut it off. Yeah, I think uh, it's a it's a sign of a immature leader, to be honest. I mean, there's there hasn't. It's pretty clear that there's no regard for how the platform. It's a communications platform. There's no regard for how community pages are set up and what impact this might have on local communities. Essential health services were impacted. You know, even mental health helplines had their pages wiped and domestic violence hotlines had their pages removed because they share a lot of news content. Uh, and, it, 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 I mean, it, it's a big F you to the Australian user of Facebook and I you know my perception is that only a company with monopoly power would treat its users in this way I can't think of another company that would just give the finger to its users in an entire country and and expect there to be no serious consequences a monopoly power and also a power that's got so big and is so unaccountable yeah. and so global that it can switch yeah. off individual countries at will because essentially there are so many others that it doesn't matter. Yeah, and Zuckerberg is interesting because he's an outlier in the tech industry in that he is both CEO of Facebook and the chairman of the board. So he really has no accountability to anyone, not even he, not even the board members and not even his shareholders. He basically can do what he likes, and I think... It's one reason why Facebook hasn't navigated through various controversies very well and and its brand is tarnished. I mean, it used to be it used to be that uh, after the election of Trump, you know, the left hated Facebook for allowing Trump to become elected and for, you know, mining people's data out to Cambridge Analytica and so on and so forth. But now the uh, the distrust of the platform is definitely bipartisan. Conservatives dislike and distrust Facebook, and um, you know, and in Australia, after this uh, shock tactic of this instant ban, we had politicians from the Greens Party, the Labor Party, the Liberal Party. All of our politicians were lining up and saying that this is outrageous uh, behaviour. So he, you know, he's united. The polity here in Australia, and uh, I think he, I think he's definitely miscalculated this move. You mentioned politics, and obviously it's closely intertwined with big tech these days. And it feels to me, yeah. I don't know if you agree with this, that since the democratic victory, um, they are kind of emboldened because there's such a close relationship between the Democrats in America and Silicon Valley. Um, you know, we had this, the banning of Donald Trump from Twitter. We had a, a lot of other sort of censorship going on. And it feels like you know their their friends are now in power, so that they can mm. they can wield their own power with uh, with less accountability. The move to ban Donald Trump, both uh, Twitter's move and Facebook's move, was certainly uh, influenced by the fact that they knew the Democrats were coming into power and they yeah. want to uh, you know please the Democrats. Um, but if you know. If the, their moves to censor and deplatform conservatives please the de- Democrats, we don't we don't know. I believe that they're they're facing antitrust lawsuits in the United States right now. So, you know, they may be pandering to de- democratic political biases uh, as a way to um, 
neutralize the antitrust action. I'm sure that's we'll I'm sure that's right because we heard about it was the Elizabeth Warren plan to break them up and uh, take a sledgehammer to big tech that must have got them frightened. And we haven't heard that much about that in the early days of the Biden administration. So we'll we'll see if that that worked. We mentioned we mentioned censorship there, um, and obviously it's a it's, this isn't a censorship controversy. This is to do with how news organizations get paid for their content. But it feels like a parallel controversy, doesn't it? Because it's another example of just the incredible power that people like Mark Zuckerberg wield over all of us. Have you noticed in Australia um, moves in the direction of kind of brandishing things, misinformation and taking things off platforms? Well, what I notice as a user of Facebook is that censorship is done in an extremely blunt fashion. I mean, it's their, their censorship is done first and foremost by algorithms, and the algorithms do not know how to differentiate between, uh, you know, a literary essay and, you know, like a, a violent screed. There, there, there's no uh, you know, ha having robotic moderators, I mean, might be cheap, but ultimately it just leads to a, a dumbed down uh, kind of uh, information ecosystem, which I think Facebook is. Um, and I, I, I think it's really unfortunate that so much of their service is just automated algorithms. I mean, I, I imagine that it's completely unrealistic to for them to employ more people to do content moderation. But, you know, I think it's another indication that they don't really take public interest that seriously when everything is automated and they can't, you know, they, they make something like $37 billion in profit a year. It's a $500 billion company. They can't invest a little bit more in having humans moderate content to make sure that censorship is not such a blunt tool. Do you have a, a kind of favoured approach to this problem? I mean, I think we all get the sense that these powers have got too big. Um, you know, Facebook now has a, a, basically a Supreme Court that they have appointed to sort of arbitrate decisions. They, they're kind of standing across the world like a colossus and, you know, treating yeah. the Australian government like a kind of errant schoolboy. How do yeah. we, how can we take them down a peg or two? Well, you know, in an ideal world, we would, ha there would be more competition in the market and we could pick up our, ident you know, our social media page that we've built on Facebook. We could pick up all of that data, all of the photos, all of the conversations, all of all of the conversations we've had with friends, all of that data, we could pick that up and we would own it because we would have digital property rights and then take that data over to a new platform that we could uh, enter into without much friction and have a new social media experience. But because of the nature of network effects and because Facebook has exploited, because it is a monopoly power and it had, because of network effects, it is the predominant social media platform, we don't have any realistic alternatives. Two ways forward, there's antitrust action in the United States to break up, to, to take, in, you know, break up the, the, you know, pull apart WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook. There's yeah. that avenue. And then the other avenue is building open source decentralized social media platforms where users own their own digital identity, much like uh, Bitcoin, but for social media or like an encrypted social media platform. And I know people are working on that now, but it will take a few years for the network effects to build so they're, you know, they're viable social media platforms. So it will take a while, but I think I think there are alternatives and we have to be open-minded and, and imaginative in, in, in thinking about what those look like. Let me, let me ask you the kind of big final question then, which is how much of a threat do you think this is? I mean, when people talk about the issue of big tech censorship, big tech bullying, the kind of thing we've seen this week, some people, and I guess I would include myself in that, think it is a really serious problem. 
and that these powers have got too big and something needs to be done about it. H- how worried are you about it? I'm, well, personally, I'm not too worried, uh, but I do think that there will be a shift in perspective or a shift in awareness now that Facebook have uh, you know, done this in Australia, this mass blocking. I think there's going to be growing awareness that it is a monopoly power. Uh, its product has declined in quality over the years. Uh, publishers and advertisers aren't getting, you know, a, a very good, you know, when you buy advertising on Facebook, it's not, you don't get a great product. I think there's growing awareness that they have market dominance, they exploit their market dominance, um, they've eliminated competitors, and I think there's going to be growing pressure on politicians to uh, take action. And I think once it becomes a popular issue amongst voters to take action against these companies, it will be a, there will be some swift um, changes in the law, legal landscape. And so I'm I'm fairly optimistic that changes will happen. In the short term, I hope we can just, you know, ride ride through the uh, the volatile environment without, you know, experiencing too much damage. Claire, thank you so much. As always, a very a nuanced take, I would say, on that. Um, and you sounded quite positive. So you've given given us some optimism to take away there. Thanks for having me, Freddie. It was lovely to talk to you. That was Claire Lehman from Quillette. Uh, Do check it out uh, directly on the website because you won't see it on Facebook, at least for now. Um, It was great to talk to her over in Sydney about Facebook and about what on earth we're going to do about their power that seems to just grow and grow. Thanks for tuning in. This was Lockdown TV.